there's one thing Beartooth has in their discography above all else, it's consistency. How did that fare the fourth time around? Welcome to Ray Ronan Does Music, where, uh, first off, before anything else, my hair is purple again. Probably never seen that on this channel. I, I'm great. Anyways, that aside, welcome to Ray Ronan Does Music, where today we're going to be reviewing the fourth studio album from American post-hardcore and metalcore band Beartooth, and their album is called Below. Beartooth is fronted by former Attack Attack frontman Caleb Shomo and formed back in 2012. Right from the get-go, it was all diesel, no stopping, pure fucking energy with songs like Set Me On Fire, I Have A Problem, and the eventual first EP, Sick. After some warp tour outings, some more live shows, one-offs, and so on, and the eventual success of their album Disgusting, Beartooth became one of the biggest names in the metalcore scene. And after the success of that album, it was going from no barricade shows to slightly bigger no barricade shows and just bigger things all around for the band. While that debut album Disgusting received a lot of love from fans and non-fans alike, uh, their second and third albums Aggressive and Disease drew some more criticism as opposed to positive things. A lot of people claiming this was repetitive, it was the same thing over and over again. Them redoing Disgusting, but again with different lyrics. And even up to the release of this album and post-release, a lot of people still share that sentiment. I for one beg to differ. I think while there's definitely a latent formula to what they do and the songs they produce, it's just like bands that do similar, like, kind of samey stuff while evolving on their own formulas such as Ice Nine Kills, We Came With Romans, Architects, or even as recent and fresh as I Prevail. All of these bands, including Beartooth, have built a reputation on having a distinct sound and interesting formula that they continue to evolve on and do more with over time, while Beartooth gets more of the flack and more of the, again, criticism for doing the same thing over and over. Talking about distinction, talking about things to set them aside, right from the get-go, the opening song, title track, in fact, called Below, is a slow burn that erupts into nothing but just pure in-your-face action. You get a lot of the sound you can expect from later parts of the album of the song, a lot of the you know, hard-hitting, heavy instrumental, like the chugging, breakdown happy stuff that you can expect again just later on. And you can really get a feel for how the song came up came together, excuse me, when you think about when the song was written. This song was actually written in, I believe, January of 2020, if I read my articles right, back when they were doing their co-headlining tour with Motionless and White. The energy of that tour, for one, I went there, so I can tell you that the energy of that tour was off the charts, phenomenal, high impact. Like, you could not go there and not have a good time. But you can really feel the sort of same... I'm using this for a lot, sorry. The same energy that came from that tour here in the song, with this being the first song written for Below. Actually, I apologize ahead of time, because this is an album that very much has me feeling a certain way, so you're gonna hear a lot of the same word. Crushing, high impact, energy, energy, energy drink. In fact, there's not a single part in this album, a single point, a single part, whatever, where I didn't sit there and think to myself, oh man, this is... This is boring. I never got that feeling. The only time things stop and take a slow breather moment is during the last track of the album called The Last Riff. And I know it's kind of weird jumping from the opening track to the closing track, but bear with me here. I wanted to bring up the song because it's a very direct both comparison and example of what the introduction track and title track below does, but it's really flipped on its head there. You get undeniable power in the way that, it, again, slow burn into it before it just grabs you by the throat. And the type of feeling that the song gives you is honestly, I think the only way to really describe it is it's, it's boss music-esque. If does that make any sense? Like your character walks into the room, it's a cutscene, you can't you can't control them, you're just watching this happen and you see the enemy in the distance. You see that big towering figure. This is the song that plays when they're starting to introduce themselves. You ever played Yakuza? Play Yakuza if you haven't. This is Yakuza type music right here. The game, not the actual you know, Japanese gang. Speaking of closing tracks, Disgusting and Aggressive both actually featured some very specific type of closing tracks, uh, with Disgusting having Sick and Disgusting and Aggressive having King of Anything. Uh, some people actually like to call these tracks, uh, Caleb Shomo having a mental breakdown for three and a half minutes. Bit on the nose there, but those songs really produce this feeling of hopelessness, this feeling of everything coming in, the song kind of overwhelming you and making you think what's happening. There's so much going on around me. There's a lot of stuff that's happening in my ears if you're listening to the song. And Below takes a similar approach. Below takes a similar approach with this outro song here, but does it with less hopelessness and more just energy. Taking a shot every single time I say energy, every time Beartooth writes a song that's the same as the last album, I say the word energy. It comes in pairs. Bottom line, the last riff is honestly below the track part two in a way that it has the same structure, the same kind of feeling and 
momentum and it just flipped down its head reversed the same but different and i think it's honestly the best closing track of the year so far there's a lot of albums i haven't had the chance to listen to uh in metalcore in every genre really so if it's a better song that i hear and i double back on it and i'm like hey this is the best song instead don't fight me. Moving back to the in-between of this song, Devastation was the first single for the album and is very much a blink and you'll miss it affair. It's the epitome of its namesake, you're getting it, there's fast, hard-hitting verses, the same crushing, intense chorus. It's anthemic and un it's un untouchable, really. It's a fantastic example of how Caleb Shomo, who if I'm not wrong, actually does all the production and uh, studio work, which, like, which I'll get into later, a little bit later from here, it's a perfect example of how he can take something that feels just like it perfectly belongs in an arena on the radio. And you can also hear it being belted out at a rundown bar while its lead singer is inches away from your face, giving you the mic, letting you sing it. It's that perfect emotional feeling. Devastation, much like a lot of the other songs here, is a very is very much a grabbing you by the back of the neck, throwing you headfirst into the pit, punchy in your face metal song. Songs that fall into a similar uh, sort of basket there are like songs like The Past Is Dead, Dominate, and some some people will again throw that in the same group as repetitive, you know, not as good as more unique songs. But I think just because they sound the same as other songs doesn't automatically make them bad, does not automatically make them shitty songs. Tooth has always been a band where you get a lot from the lyricism. You aren't getting just copy and paste radio rock guy sitting in the studio writing down whatever's on the back of his head that's the album lyrics stuff beartooth and gil shomo has always been known for being brutally honest and like just raw with the content that he gives you the past is dead and dominate has this a little bit but i think a song that really right from the start of the song the first moments of the song i feel like uh, skin really captures that sort of brutal uh identity that beartooth has established just right from the get-go like hear the lyrics Excuse me, I'm reading straight from my laptop here because I got my notes here. Uh, the lyrics from Skin go as such. I've been sleeping on the floor of my closet again, wishing hopelessness is something I might beat in the end. I've been bearing it down in my system again. I am so uncomfortable. Like, listen to that. Listen, listen to even, maybe not me saying that, but like, put the song on, listen to that. Put yourself in the headspace of what Caleb Shomo is trying to create, trying to put in your head, trying to put you in the same room as, and really just take a second and let that just hit you, let that fill you, like get that in your heart, get that in your head. Vulnerability is something that Caleb Shomo's never shied away from, but moments like that really show a deeper side of that. It's not just, oh, I'm sad, oh, I'm suffering from depression. It's really delving into the mental headspace of what Caleb's experiencing and putting it, it, putting it beautifully into words and into song. Not only is this song what, probably the most unique song here on the album, I think it's the most unique song that Beartooth has done in a while. I you know I talked about uh, repetitivity and the same thing just now a couple seconds ago. This is more than just your typical tooth song. This is more than just your run of the mill bear tooth. Nah, da -na -na, da -na -na. Like this is more than that. It's a unique take on the, again, formula. It's taking what you know the band for, but giving you a different taste of it, a different side of it, and a again, unique look at it. Bear tooth is often fighting against and fighting with repetitivity, you know, for better and for worse. But this is more than just like walking hand in hand with it. This is Bear Tooth take, this is Caleb taking his hand, grabbing you, I'm gonna fucking get in your face real quick in the camera right here, grabbing you by the throat and saying, hey, this is something new. This is different. This is them pulling you back and saying, hey, there's more to us than you think meets the eye. There's more to us than just the same notion you have of us. We aren't just the same copy and paste again. We have something new, we have something more to offer. It's, it's almost a hidden strength of Beartooth at this point because you get so many people saying, oh, it's the same thing over and over again. They get moments like this, moments like basically the entirety of the answer. The intro to Hell of it is so many more tiny little minute moments throughout this whole album. It just, it's, again, a show of uniqueness from Caleb Trump on here. I did mention repetitivity here, and I did mention how I was going to get into that, though. And while I would love to just have a review completely positive, very few albums get me the chance, the opportunity, Go with something that you had a few 
best of threes here, or fours, or fives, or sometimes sixes with certain elements. When every song has a breakdown, and some of the breakdowns aren't much more than a chug heavy session of just guitar and anger, you seem to realize the you seem to have sorry, you seem to have a moment where you think in your life, oh yeah, this is one guy behind here. It's Caleb Shomala on vocals, guitar, bass, drums, he's producing it, he's mastering it, he's doing everything with very little influence from the outside. I think you were on season of wrestling with uh, John Feldman, I think for the most part you are very much getting one person's perspective and input that would bring himself. Caleb actually tried to say from day one that Beartooth is in the same vein as Red Hot Chili Peppers, Nickelback, it's the same album, but like the different words. getting the same thing over again because you're not letting yourself feel the rest of it. You get deeper cuts like The Answer from this album, One More from Disgusting, Rock is Dead from Aggressive. Unique and different times within the album where they were Caleb and Beartooth try to give you something else. But a lot of people gloss over that. A lot of people look at that and say, yeah, well, everything's still the same. I'm just gonna, I'm, I'm negative Nancy. Hi, nice to meet you. But it really is moments like this that make every album and every experience with Beartooth a unique entity with entity with its own aura around it. All in all, if there's such a thing as a bad Beartooth album, this isn't it. This is their best album since Disgusting, and I mean that. Like, honestly, really quick, eventually I'm gonna do a ranking every Beartooth song video, but as of right now, in this moment, June 29th, 2021, I'm gonna say it goes best to worst, disgusting, below, aggressive, disease. I don't count sick because it's not a full album. This album not only heralds modern heavyweights holding the torch alongside Beartooth like Up Mice and Men, but it also calls back to classic acts such as Sabbath with its influence of modern metalcore and classic metal, sometimes even doom metal. Did you catch that in the album? Fucking doom metal? Yes, I caught that. I'm excited to see what else lies in this era. I'm expected to. I am excited to see the expected deluxe edition. That every every Bear Tooth album gets a deluxe edition. We're gonna get a couple new songs, some more vinyl, some spinny boys. And all in all, I'm excited to see what from loosely quoted from Forbes, the Dave Grohl of metalcore, Caleb Shoma will do next. But it's the end of the review, and I'm gonna be giving Below by Bear Tooth an 8.3 out of 10. I highly encourage you to check out this album. Again, it's their best outing since Disgusting. It's very much a must listen for 2020 for metalcore alike. It's an album you need in your life. I'm going to be putting links down in the description below to their album as well as a link to their tour page, which if you're watching this after September 2021 or October 2021, the tour is over. You're too late. It's going to show different dates, hopefully. So it's a temporary link temporary setback all in all fantastic album and i want to thank you all so much for sticking around with this, for this review if you enjoyed the review if you enjoyed the album let me know down in the comments if you want to discuss some things further with me something you think i didn't quite hit the mark on go down there i'll talk with you about it and above all i'll stay hydrated have a great day and i'll see you next time